Good morning. Thank you for joining us to celebrate Kentucky State University's Community of Scholars. Today, we honor students whose exemplary accomplishments further the intellectual mission of Kentucky State University. To our students, in every way, you are the reason we are here today. You are the reason we are here at Kentucky State University. You are our purpose, you are our mission. And for these reasons, colleagues and students, please join with me in a round of applause for all of our students who have earned academic honors. <laughs> to bring us reflections on this occasion is Ms. Demetria Bush, a junior journalism major who is also an 1890 scholar recipient here at Kentucky State University. Following Ms. Bush, we will receive a musical selection by Ms. Tremia Johnson, a junior music major. Good morning, Kentucky State University, and welcome to the 2022 Academic Honors Convocation. My name is Demetria Bush, and I'm a junior majoring in journalism. I want to thank everyone for attending this celebration of high academic achievement. We are here in person and virtually to honor the students who have excelled in their respective majors, departments, and colleges. Today we recognize President's Award recipients, 1890 scholars like myself, Dean's List students, honor roll recipients, honor society inductees, and all high achieving scholars. As students, we have faced many hardships over the past couple of years between COVID-19 adjustments and our personal lives, sometimes staying on top of our goals has been stressful. However, like true thoroughbreds, we continue to strive for excellence and we put our priorities first. This is why our theme, a celebration of thoroughbred excellence is so significant. It demonstrates that a Kentucky State University student is resilient and resourceful. Last Thursday, we celebrated Atwood Day, which is a tribute to former KSU President Rufus, Dr. Rufus B. Atwood. The keynote speaker, Dr. Nancy J. Dawson, stated that here at KSU, we all ha must have an Atwood attitude. Dr. Dawson defined an Atwood attitude as turning water into wine. We have to make a way when there is no way. We are, we are to make a way when there is no way to me, that is what we are doing. We are turning water into wine and marking our existence at KSU by continuing to stick to the plan. As I close, I would like to encourage all scholars to stay focused on our goals and to continue achieving through every circumstance. Our next destination is graduation and beyond. This is our occasion. Thank you. Join me for a, in a musical selection, Lift Every Voice and Sing, by Miss Zania Tutwaller, a soprano junior major here at Kentucky State University. Oh, 
Thank you, Ms. Tutwilder, for that wonderful performance of Lift Every Voice and Sing. Let's give her another round of applause. And I thank you too, Dr. Mallory, for accompanying Ms. Titwaller and sharing your treasure as well and your talents. At this time, I invite to the lectern Dr. Berkeley King Jr., Vice Provost, to introduce our speaker of our honors convocation. Following the introduction, we will welcome our convocation speaker, Dr. Phyllis W. Dawkins, to deliver her address to our honorees today. Dr. King. Dr. Phyllis Worthy Dawkins, our speaker this morning, received her Doctorate of Philosophy from The Ohio State University, a Master's of Arts from the University of Michigan, and a Bachelor's of Science from Johnson C. Smith University. After her academic career, Dr. Dawkins became a woman with extensive higher education experiences who is adept at the inner workings of six HBCUs, inclusive of South Carolina State University, Johnson C. Smith University, Dillick University, Cheney University, Bennett College, and presently Clark Atlanta University. During her tenure as the 18th president of Bennett College, she spearheaded a successful bipartisan legislative effort with the UNCF that enabled Bennett and other historically black colleges and universities to get deferments on payments to the HBCU Capital Finance Loan Program within 53 days. She also led the nationwide Stand with Bennett College campaign that yielded $9.5 million in 60 days and $10.5 million with the June 2019 audit. In her career, she has fundraised more than $19 million and acquired over $54 million in state and federal grants. In addition, her higher education experiences are inclusive of a tenured and full professor, provost and senior vice president for academic affairs at Bennett College, Cheney University, and at Dillard University. She also served as department chair, dean, and interim vice president for academic affairs at her alma mater, Johnson C. Smith University. She also served as an instructor of physical education at South Carolina State University. Most importantly, she assumed critical responsibilities at those institutions to ensure successful reaffirmation of accreditation by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges for both Johnson C. Smith University and Dillard University, and by the Middle State Commission on Higher Education at Cheney University. Furthermore, Dr. Dawkins was appointed to the President's Board of Advisors during the years of 2018 to 2020 which meant she had a seat at the table to advise the United States President and the Secretary of Education on all matters pertaining to strengthening the educational capacity of HBCUs through the White House Initiative on Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Also, the PBA advised on participation of HBCUs in federally sponsored programs, made recommendations and reports on how to increase the private sector's role in strengthening HBCUs, with particular emphasis on enhancing institutional infrastructure and the use of new technologies. She has received numerous prestigious appointments, participated in several White House initiatives related to strengthening academic achievement for students and enrolled, who was enrolled at historically black colleges and universities, students, faculty, staff and administrators. Let us welcome Dr. Phyllis Worthy Dawkins to the lectern. Good morning to our distinguished interim president Stamps, Provost Hamilton, faculty, staff, guests, and student honorees today. I want to first say before I start my speech. Uh, today marks the 80, number 81 historically black colleges and universities that I've been to. So I was looking forward to, I've been holding on to 80 for a long time, so today is 81. Our theme today is a celebration of thoroughbred excellence. 
When you hear the term thoroughbred, what comes to mind other than a horse? Speed, strength, agility, spirit. These are all great terms, but there is more to it. I know you're asking yourselves how this relates to me. Well, let me enlighten you. There's a reason that thoroughbreds, which are known as elite racehorses, wear blinders when they perform. If so, it's so they can't look to the left or to the right and lose their footing, distracted by the progress of surrounding horses. So I say to students today, run your race, run your race. Rather than comparing your journey to others, every person has his or her own unique set of talents and gifts, challenges, and obstacles. And as a result, these factors will contribute to your own pace. In racing, there is a term called a PR, which stands for personal record. Doing your personal best, rather than comparing yourself to others, is the only worthwhile pursuit. And as you continue to break your PR, you will ultimately reach your destination. Thoroughbreds are sensitive and high-spirited creatures with outstanding speed and stamina. And when in the company of other horse breeds, their infectious talent raises the level of those around them. Much like a thoroughbred, each of you have run, uh, each of you have run your own race during your time at Kentucky State. And during that specific journey, you have encountered other students and faculty, creating friendships and inspiring others to be great while leaving your imprint. Once again, run your race, rather than comparing your journey to others. Others may, by outward appearances, seem strong, faster, smarter, but cannot endure, and vice versa. In the end, it doesn't matter. Just keep blinders on and focus on your goals to cross the finish line. In this celebration of thoroughbred excellence, we must understand that there is no finite amount of success. In other words, what is for you is for you. Go out and get it, unconcerned of the pathways of others. So to, com to consistently perform at a high level, thoroughbreds are fed the most premium barley, sleep in plush stables, and are stroke with the finest brushes. Why, why do you think that is? Simply because they are divas? or nothing more than an expensive hobby. No, it is reflective of a mentality. Striving to, you, to be your best demands the best treatment from both others and yourselves. We must be kind to ourselves, to our bodies, and set our standards high. We, we must consistently invest in our minds we must constantly nourish our souls as we train on our internal pathway, on our internal pathway to excellence. And all the while, we must be particular about what and who we are subjecting ourselves to. It should all the thoroughbred horse, horses be premium. Now, I'm not talking about cost or materialism, I'm speaking to value. Avoid negativity and fuel yourself with optimal positivity 
so that you can continue to perform at your highest level and meet your standards. After all, self-care is a form of self-love. What we can also glean from the thoroughbreds is that excellence is a byproduct of consistency. And consistency is a byproduct of repetition. Establish a routine. Set your standards high. And stick to it. Achieving excellence isn't simply just about performance. It all begins with preparation and dedication. So when I was in the midst of the Stand With Bennett campaign in December 2018, when we learned that we may lose our accreditation, when I was also president of Bennett College at the time, I had to run a race to keep the institution accredited. We had to raise $5 million in 50 days, 60 days. During the Christmas holidays, I collaborated with my leadership team, faculty, staff, alums, and others to run the race. We started the race with a number of interviews on television, radio, and newspapers. We engaged our social media team out of Los Angeles and Bennett alums. Literally every day in December and January, I participated in three to four interviews per day. In the midst of this time period, I had personal challenges and campus drama. Life continues at, on campuses, okay? But I had to keep my routine, keep the blinders on, and run the race. In the end, Instead of raising $5 million, we raised $8.2 million by February the 2nd, and by the end of the fiscal year, we raised $9.5 million. Thank you. Yes, at Bennett College, we ran the race. There are different types of thoroughbreds. There is a type that is born with innate talent strength and durability that hits the ground running. Then there is the type that is born with the same abilities to succeed but needs time to develop those skills and to believe, to believe that they have exactly what it takes. It is the same in life for you. Some of you will always know what you want to do and how to get it, and how to go out and earn it, while others of you struggle early on with making choices, but manage to find the strength to push through and, and, to push through and fight for the win. That win is this day. As you walk across that stage, you are crossing the finish line and receiving your flowers or gifts or awards for a job well done. But this is only the beginning. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. Remember to pace yourselves. Try not to push, push yourselves too fast. And while setbacks may be momentarily, keep your dreams alive. They are part of your journey. We must keep some energy, patience, and passion in reserve for the miles ahead. Grit. Grit, as the New York Times bestselling author Angela Duckworth defines it, is having passion and perseverance, sticking to long-term goals, and having the emotional stamina to keep going when others have given up. So, as you leave here today, remember, the marathon continues as we honor you during this celebration of thoroughbred excellence. Thank you. Let's give Dr. Dawkins another round of applause for those inspiring words. 
And Dr. Dawkins, we will keep our blinders on, stay focused, and remain thoroughbred strong. Thank you very much. At this time, we have a presentation that we would like to extend to you for your time, your efforts, and those wonderful words. Thank you for participating in our convocation today. Those inspiring words really meant a lot to our students. And we look forward to keeping our blinders on and staying thoroughbred. So, thank you. Thank you. At this time, Deans Kurt Pomper and David Shabazz will recognize our students for academic honors and those students for achieving Dean's List status, followed by a presentation from, for the Mayor's Citizen Award by Commissioner Lisa Irvin. I'm sorry, Dr. Hamilton. At this time, the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta would like to honor the guest speaker. On behalf of the Alpha Pi chapter, we would like to present you with these gifts. Thank you, Soror. Good morning, everyone. And uh, today is the Dean of the College of Agriculture, Community, and the Sciences. I want to congratulate all those receiving honors and recognitions today. And we're gonna start off today with recognizing our USDA 1890 scholarship recipients. And this program actually is distributed uh, for students of many majors across the two colleges. And so we'd like to have those students stand at this point and be recognized. As Dean of the College of Humanities, Business, and Society, I also want to congratulate all of those receiving the honors recognitions today. If you look in your programs, um, our college starts on page 16. I'd like to recognize all the students receiving departmental honors in the School of Public Administration and Political Science, the School of Business, the School of Behavioral and Social Sciences, the School of Social Work, the School of Criminal Justice, and the School of Humanities and Performing Arts. At this time, all students receiving departmental honors in these schools, will you please stand and be recognized? And I would also like to, to recognize the departmental honors for the School of Agriculture uh, and for the College of Agriculture Community and the Sciences. If you turn to page 14, you'll see the listings of these students. And this encompasses the schools of agriculture, communities, and the environment, the School of Aquaculture aquatic, and Aquatic Sciences, the School of STEM, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, including the departments and units of Biology, Chemistry, Computer Science, and Math. Also, the School of Education, Human Development, and Consumer Sciences, as well as the School of Nursing. Would all those students receiving the departmental honors in this college please stand and be recognized? The Dean's List and the Academic Honor Roll recognize students who have earned a minimum grade point average of 3.2 during any given semester. Here's the difference. 
The dean's list recognizes full-time students and the academic honor roll is reserved for those students who are part-time. At this time, all students named to the academic honor roll for either spring 2021, Maymester 2021, or the fall 2021 semester, will you please stand and be recognized? The academic honor roll. All students named to the Dean's List for either Spring 2021, Maymester 2021, or Fall 2021 semester, will you please stand and be recognized? As we celebrate your academic achievements, we ask that you use this as motivation to continue striving for excellence in all things. Thank you. Tucker Hamilton will now present the Presidential Scholars. Sorry, first we have a presentation by the mayor. Well, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm actually not the mayor. I am Lisa Unger, a Frankfurt City Commissioner, so I'm stepping in for the mayor today. Um, so I know that I could speak for Mayor Wilkerson, um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Waldridge, and Commissioner May and myself when I say that we love and support KSU. Um, it's such an honor to see this student body's achievements today and just to be here to present the Mayor's Citizenship Award. The recipient is a senior majoring in business administration. He hails from Detroit, Michigan, with a strong pride for his city. He's attended Kentucky State University consecutively for four years. Since gracing the College on the Hill, he's participated in various extracurricular activities, notably serving as a member of the mighty Marching Thoroughbreds. He's also an activist and a member of the NAACP. He's active within the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. His passion for serving the KSU student body includes previous experience as a residential assistant and a senior residential assistant within the Office of Resident Life, Residence Life. Through this role, he is known for organizing students to community service efforts. He is the 21 to 22 Student Government Association President and Student Regent. He also represents Kentucky State University on the Council of Post-Secondary Education on the Board of Student Body Presidents. I had the honor of introducing him at another event here on campus recently, and his leadership shines bright. Congratulations to Jason Robinson. I don't know if it's morning or afternoon, but good whatever it is to K-State University at this time. Can we give a uh, round of applause for everybody that's come forth, everybody that's received anything today? Thank you, thank you, thank you. At this time, we will have our President's Awards, and we have them categorized as senior, junior, trans, sophomore, freshman, and transfer. And at this time, I am going to call the names in that order, and you all will come up receive your award, take your picture to the right, and then you will exit the stage. Right now we have our senior presidential award going to Mr. Jacob Lilly. We have our junior presidential award going to Michaela Bell, excuse me if I said your name wrong. Oh, 
our other junior, Brayden Howard. Let's move to our sophomores, Jada Jones. <laughs> Sophomore, Alante Kylis. <laughs> Sophomore, Kendall Smith. Sophomore Sydney Thomas. Freshman Jaya Alcorn. Freshman Haley Mice. Freshman, Alicia Smith. <laughs> Transfer, Ashosha. Ashosha. Ashosha Wall Green. All right. <laughs> and transfer student, Sincere Woods. At this time, can we give all of our presidential awards a round of applause? Thank you. Great accomplishments. As the only public HBCU in the state of Kentucky, Kentucky State University is grounded by its heritage, focused on the future, and deeply committed to student success. Scholars, the faculty and staff, and your fellow peers honor you today because we recognize that your academic achievement just did not happen. You are the ones awake late at night studying and writing papers. You are the ones balancing personal, professional, and co-curricular obligations with your determination to excel in your fields of study. You are the ones who use tremendous sense of inquiry to make discoveries, to experiment, to create, to explore. So on this day, you should be proud as we celebrate you for your academic achievements. Let's give our scholars a round of applause once again. As we close our program today, please stand with me for the singing of the Kentucky State University alma mater, led by Ms. Tremia Johnson. Please stand, Ms. Johnson. 